Good morning, St Luke's, and welcome to the next of our daily Bible readings. We're looking at quite a long chapter, Exodus chapter 28, uh, 43 verses in it in total, but I'll try and take us uh, through with a, a few sort of highlights, if you like. I remember a number of years ago uh, when I was conducting a wedding for a young couple and I asked them what they wanted me to wear, as they were, whether they wanted me to wear uh, a suit or my robes, uh, and they asked me to wear my robes, which I was perfectly happy to do. And a little while after the day and all of the celebrations, I asked them, I just said, oh, why did, why did you want me to wear them? You know, did you want that sort of traditional uh, feel to proceedings? They said, oh, no, we'd just never seen you wear them. Uh, and we thought it would be quite fun if you had to dress up for the day. Uh, it was a baking hot summer day. And I remember sweating in these black robes uh, and the cassock and all the shenanigans that go with it. Well, in uh, chapter 28 of Exodus, having described the tabernacle, its construction and its furniture, remember, which is full of meaning for us uh, about the way home, echoing Eden and the sac pointing to the sacrifice of Jesus. What we've got in chapter 28 is the priest. Uh, he is described uh, in this chapter so that we see that the priest is the one who will lead God's people home. And central to the description uh, are the clothes that he is to wear. We read in verse 2 that the purpose of this clothing is to give the priest dignity and honour. These are to be like a uniform to show that the priest is the one acting on God's behalf. And we'll see that the, this uniform will have various components to it. Um, a breast piece, uh, an ephod, uh, which is really like a, a sort of very elaborate athlete's bib to show what team they're playing for. Then a robe, tunic, turban and a sash. Now, all of these are clothes with a message. So let's have a look at the message that they convey. The focus first for the, both the breast piece and the ephod is the priest as representative of the people. And so we read in verse 11 uh, that in respect of the ephod, uh, they are to engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones, the way that a gem cutter engraves a seal. And then later at the end of verse 12, Aaron is to bear the names on his shoulders. That's where these jewels are to be placed as a memorial before the Lord. Uh, for the ephod, uh, again in verse 21, then there we're told that there are to be 12 stones. One for each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal. And so then also in verse 29, whenever Aaron uh, enters the holy place, he will bear the names of the sons of Israel over his heart on the breastpiece of decision as a continuing memorial before the Lord. The decision referred to here uh, might be God's judgment, him deciding over his people, or uh, God's decision of choice, uh, the choice to value his people like jewels. What is irrefutable uh, is that the priest comes into God's presence on behalf of the whole people of God. Then the other items reinforce this role. In verse 35, we are told that the bells the priest must wear uh, on his uniform are to inform the Lord that it is him and not someone else. Uh, now, these things are symbolic. Uh, God does not require a tinkling little bell to know who it is that seeks to step into his presence. Rather, it's a reminder to the people that special dispensation is being given to the priest. Such is the Lord's holiness, uh, that even the gifts that are brought to him must first be consecrated, we're told in verse 38. Then the tunic is to bear a plaque declaring, holy is the Lord, as a reminder of this truth. After then, the tunic and the sash are added, uh, again, we're told, to provide dignity and honour. And the final instruction is for the priest to wear, well, in brutal terms, special pants. Now, unfailingly, this uh, can't be read without a little bit of snigger coming to mind, can it? It's simply a funny idea that God has to indicate that the priest should not expose his nakedness to God. The sense of embarrassment and shame that accompanies nakedness is important. Since back in Eden, uh, nakedness has been a symbol of shame and sin against the Lord. Adam and Eve, when they have disobeyed the Lord, then they immediately became aware of their nakedness, both before each other and before the Lord. See, deep down, uh, we all know that we are guilty before God. We are guilty of rebelling against him. 
and for God or indeed anyone else to know what we are truly like on the inside, it would be deeply embarrassing and shameful, wouldn't it? Imagine that recurring nightmare that some people have of suddenly finding themselves undressed and in a public place uh, and how shameful that would be and how quickly uh, you would want to hide. Uh, Well, imagine how much more awful it would be if the depths of our hearts and minds were on display to the world. The underwear covers over the priest's shame just as God made clothes to cover over Adam and Eve's shame before him and each other in the garden. So altogether, the uniform represents the priest as the one who is to lead the way into God's presence. Christian communities have often struggled with how to correctly use symbolism and architecture, both in their buildings and in the attire, the clothing of their worship leaders. Often they're trying to carefully tread a line between the power of visual symbolism and also the ultimate truth that Jesus has fulfilled everything that priestly clothes and garments pointed towards. I guess the answer really is uh, somewhere in between that no uniform is required uh, either for God's people or for those leading uh, worship. There may be value, though, sometimes uh, in dressing appropriately to point uh, or to dress in a way that points others to be closer to Jesus. Not required, but if used uh, rightly, it can be helpful. Delicate line to tread. What matters is that everything everything that goes on in our worship should be a visual reminder to us and to others that Jesus is our priest who leads the way by sacrifice into the beauty, perfection and blessing of our home in God's presence. Let me pray for us this day. Heavenly Father, again, would we know our presence with you, to know uh, that Jesus is the priest who has made it possible for us to enter into your presence, who leads the way for us and who performs the sacrifice of himself. Uh, Let us delight and rejoice in that, uh, recognising sometimes the symbolism that goes on around us in our worship never to be distracted by it, but rather would you use it for our hearts, our eyes and our minds to be pointed all the more to our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.